Hey guys, what's up? JOZ back here again, and today we're going to look at some of the Vikings draft needs and then look at some prospects to fill those needs. Simple as that. So let's look at these positions in order of need. So let's start off with running back, where we'll, we'll be having all the running backs returning. And surprisingly, the Vikings re-signed Abdullah, so we have four running backs, CJ Ham. We do not need any help there. The only thing is Cook is in a contract here, so maybe we could draft some insurance in case he leaves, but we have some much higher needs. So I think we have zero need here, but you can always add competition and backups are cool. Um, so these are all late round picks. Starting off with Clyde Edward Hellware. He's a one cut runner with return experience and can kind of catch and run out of the backfield. Next is Javon Leak. He's an elite playmaker, great in outside zone, and a great returner. Could this be a cheaper Abdullah? Something the Vikings could always use. Just cut a veteran for a rookie would be a fun situation. And number three in last running back is Darrington Evans. He's a great third down back that can return and run the outside zone. So another Abdullah-like replacement option. Uh, moving on to number two, our second to least needed position on offense is the quarterback position. Uh, Cousins got extended, so that goes makes us not need any starters for next year, and we resign Manny, and so we have our backup. So maybe a long-term backup would be cool, but basically zero need. So starting off, uh, let's look at Jalen Hurts. I think he's a poor man's Cam Newton. He'd be available day two. Would the Vikings want to roll the dice with a guy with that much upside? You're looking at somewhere between Joe Webb and Cam Newton. Probably somewhere between the Tim Tebow era. So that would be interesting the Vikings would want to go there. But most likely we'd go late in the rounds. So there's some late round quarterback options. Number one is Shea Patterson. He kind of reminds me of uh, Case Keenum. My Vikings fans love that it factor and a little bit of athleticism that he provided so maybe he get a round two in that another option is James Morgan a strong armed gritty quarterback kind of has that Brett Favre mentality to him another is Steven Montez a big armed highly talented developmental prospect would be a fun quarterback three and Cole McDonald of in a very similar boat boat he's a uh, very talented but very raw exactly what you'd want for a practice squad slash quarterback three uh, moving on to tight end uh, we could be potentially looking for a long-term in-line tight end replacement if we want Irv to continue to be doing Irv things and be freed up to do that and wouldn't surprise me if this is Rudy's last year on the team but we could still see the same th same three guys next year so next is your need maybe next year uh, we would need someone there but we could have some fun here. So since we use so many two tight end sets, look at some mid-round tight end options. Starting off with Albert, and you will not make me pronounce his last name. Um, he has huge upside. He's a boom or bust, fast and tall tight end. S massive tight ends, a red zone threat. The Vikings could really use that playmaker another option it's colby parkinson another huge six foot seven inch tight end with great hands again you need that red zone target you got that guy uh number three is dalton keen he can play tight end and fullback um jimmy kleinsauce or anyone it'd be great to be able to fill both the roles at once especially if we don't want to con continue paying cj ham a uh, pro bowl fullback money just to save a little bit of money, say, next year. Um, and he's got p multiple pancakes, so one of the better blocking tight ends in this draft class. And then the sexiest option on this list is, of course, Thaddeus Moss. Underrated blocker, yes. He, we, of course, know him of Randy's son, but he, what he's best at is blocking. He's a really good blocker, but he still has some of that Randy Moss receiving ability. He has great hands. He makes great sideline catches, keeps his feet in bounds would be maybe the very best Kyle Rudolph replacement in this draft class. But we started out the very nice, right? We had our first three positions where we didn't need a whole lot of help. Very little need there. So you're like, oh, our offense isn't going too bad. No, no, the next two position groups have huge needs. Starting off with wide receiver. We traded Diggs. 
Thielen is coming off an off-year derailed by injury. Hopefully, he can be back at 100%. And hopefully, Thielen can be good enough as the number one guy because we don't get to see that very often. And he will be 30 come next year. Uh, but he did get better. But we did get better at wide receiver three with Tajay Sharp. Uh, so we have great depth uh, with him and BC Johnson. We need a true wide receiver two and hopefully hit a one with a wide receiver one potential with Thielen getting up there in age. Uh, I don't want to put our wide receiver one label on Thielen for the next three years when he's going to be getting close to the mid-30s. Um, so a huge need. Uh, so let's look at some options that would might be available. So let's look at some top 15 pick options. We would have to trade up for these. No, number one, CD Lamb. I think Lamb has the highest ceiling in this draft. Uh, he's uh, six foot two. It runs only four five forty, but it looks faster on tape. So hopefully that holds up in the next level. And he's very aggressive going after the football and great run after the catch and contested catch monster. Number two, Jerry Judy, best route runner in the, in the draft, and he's great at run after the catch. Looks a lot like Diggs on film to me. And he's another top 15er. And then Henry Ruggs. You need that deep threat. He's your deep threat. He's a 4-2-40. Runs fluid routes and does have great hands. But if we don't want to trade up in the first round, we do not have to. This wide receiver class is loaded. So let's start look at some other options that would be available at 22. These are some late first, even early second round draft options for wide receivers, starting off with Jalen Rager. Uh, the more I watch this guy's film, the more I like him. He returns both punts and kicks. He's a great playmaker in space, and he's a solid route runner. Sounds a lot like Jerry Judy. The more I watch him, the more I think he's just a more value version of Jerry Judy. He might not be as refined off the bat, but I think the ceiling's very similar. So it'd be a, a very great first or late of the first round option. Uh, number two, T. Higgins, an AJ Green comparison. He's your six foot four. Big body, box out the cornerback receiver. He's an amazing 50-50 ball catcher. Uh, if we wanted Josh Doxson to kind of be that guy who never got onto the field, maybe we could get that in T. Higgins. Doesn't give that deep threat that we would like for that Diggs replacement, but that big body receiver, it would be very helpful as well. Moving to Denzel Mims, who can kind of do both. Incredible combination of speed and height. A huge ceiling. Uh, for this guy, he's a touchdown machine in college. He was an outside, he was a fade specialist, just throw him on the outside, fade it up, and he would win those battles all the time. Uh, moving to Justin Jefferson, the last of this late first round options, uh, and he's a great possessional slot receiver. But he's a lot more like Thielen than Diggs. The Vikings could work with that. Thielen does have versatility to two go on the outside. Uh, but he's best served on the inside. So this one would be a little bit tough. But Justin Jefferson might give us the very best day one option as far as wide receiver talent. So there'd be, st there'd be something to work with here. Uh, but e this draft is so good that even if we don't, don't draft one in the first round, there's still options. So let's look at round two through four, the middle of the draft. Uh, so starting off with Chase Claypool. He's a great blocker, big and fast. Six foot four, 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 40. We need the outside zone blocker that Laquan Treadwell gave us. He's got that for sure, and he gives us the upside of speed and bigger body than Treadwell. So it'd be a lot of fun there. Uh, KJ Hamler. Another option, hey, we, we want fast, he gives us fast for very good value. Tavon Austin comparison, he's an explosive run after the catch gadget type of a wide receiver. Uh, he does have some concerning drops, which knocks him down the list of the Jalen Raggers of the world. Uh, but it'd be a solid second round option if we want that explosive wide receiver that the Vikings could really need. And then last, but certainly not least, the receiver that's on every single Minnesota Vikings fans and Minnesota fans. Mock draft, Tyler Johnson. Devontae Adams-like receiver. He's a competitive, big-body possession wide receiver. Again, a little bit more like Thielen, but for the value of a third or fourth round pick, Tyler Johnson would be phenomenal there. And uh, he could go on the outside, and we could have a, just a, a, all, all those contested catches would be great. I mean, we just have to trust Cousins would trust those guys of 
winning those contested 50-50 possession tough uh, catches. Uh, moving on to, of course, the biggest need, offensive line. The Vikings foolishly cut Josh Kleins. So now we need a right guard, a better left guard as well, and we want an improvement at left tackle. Huge needs. Uh, the home run play in, in this draft is a franchise left tackle. Draft him, slide Reef to into guard, and then all of a sudden we have a three-way back or a three-way kind of battle there at right guard. So we can make it work, and that would be all right. Surprisingly, we signed all three backup vets to very solid deals. And we have two very solid second-year linemen that can battle it out for a potential starting position with uh, Drew Samia and Ali Udo. Uh, so right now, our depth is really is fantastic. Uh, we might have the best second-team offensive line in the NFL, but we need some starters. So draft or trade early, but we really don't need any depth, any late-round offensive linemen would have a really tough time making this team and I'll be fine with just taking these veterans for another year. Uh, so let's look at some early first rounders, starting with uh, Jedrick Willis, who's been usually considered the best lineman in, in this draft. He, he is athletic with great foot, footwork. I think he's your plug-in and play a right tackle. Not a fantastic scheme fit for the Vikings, but if the Vikings would be okay with moving O'Neal to left tackle and want to trade up for him, he's probably the best day one starter out of this bunch. Number two, Mecky Becton, a mammoth, six foot seven, three hundred sixty-five pound road grader, which the six three sixty might be a bit of a weight concern. Can he keep enough of the fat weight off and get more muscle? Uh, is he going to just balloon up and that's no good either but he still is a good athlete for his size um but again not a fantastic screen uh, a fantastic scheme fit uh, moving on to andrew thomas he's i think he's your high floor low ceiling lineman he should, will be solid but probably won't be great uh but he's most likely going to play left or right tackle so the vikings would be able to work with that there and then finally we have tristan worse he's your at elite athlete super strong great zone fit but most likely going to play right tackle or right guard so not that home run left tackle he has played a little bit there but most likely playing on the right side and guard looks to be in his future in the nfl but moving on to the players that will probably be available that we won't have to trade up for. Uh, starting off with Cesar Ruiz. Cesar Ruiz is your nasty center slash guard in the middle of the offensive line. He can play all three positions. And he plays whistle to whistle with some elite nastiness. Very much what we saw and like out of Drew Samia. Uh, next is Josh Jones. He's your solid athlete, which showed promising tape at left tackle, but needs some coaching. He has, he has to get some footwork down, uh, but he's great for zone and blocking in space. I think he's my favorite offensive lineman that we would, could take at, at 22. Uh, next is John Simpson. He's your road grader guard with good enough speed, uh, but poor in pass pro and his penalties are an issue for him. Uh, next is Austin Jackson. I think he's your high risk, high reward prospect. He's a great athlete, great blocker in space, but needs to get his footwork down, and that is a must. And he needs to just get reps and hopefully get to have the right coach, and he can be very good. And he'd be another lineman that'd be great in zone. And last but certainly not least, we have Ezra Cleveland. And I think he is, if Bradbury was a left tackle, you have that super athlete, very fast, great in blocking in space, uh, but needs to add weight to his frame and just be stronger overall. But I think he'd be perfect in his zone, and I think we could work with that. You saw similar qualities out of Brian O'Neill, that he's going to be raw, he's going to need some time, but starts the second half of the year and plays very good. So if we can get another fast track on some of these raw offensive linemen, that would be great. So... There was my offensive line list, and as you saw, you know, the top half of this list, that's the big name guys, but a lot of them aren't very good scheme fits, so I think the Vikings are in a very lucky position for the best scheme fits, those 
especially left tackle options that can be great in outside zones, they'll be on the board when we have the when we have the pick at 22, 25, or in the second round. So the Vikings are in a good position there. So hopefully we can get that guy, draft one or even two offensive linemen, and the Vikings could have a very good line going forward. But there was the offense 2020 draft position breakdown for the Vikings did I miss one of your favorite prospects give me your um give me your prospects that you like the most in the comment section down below did I have this position in order for as far as the Viking strengths uh give me that your thoughts in the comment section about down below if you think anything other than offensive line isn't the biggest need I don't know what to tell you for as far as the offensive goes the defensive breakdown coming up soon we'll see you guys then